We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. That you are here to know with us. Have your way in us and through us. Lord, we are vessels of clay in your hands this afternoon. We ask, Lord, that you come and reign in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for you never gather people in vain. This afternoon, you are here to bless somebody's life. Thank you for those that are watching us. Thank you, Lord, for the ministers around. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I want to continue with what we started last Sunday. That uh, out of the strong, something sweet. Amen. And um, our main text was Judges chapter 14. When we go about our, our lives, we face so many obstacles in life. There's a lot of opposition and it's, it's not a new thing. The Bible says in Matthew 11 verse 12, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. What does this mean? That we really need to engage. We need to do something about those things that come against our lives. Don't allow things just to, to overtake you. You need to do something about it. You need to rise and um, actually fight. And uh, we, unlike the Old Testament believers, we actually don't experience the kind of thing that Samson experienced. The Bible says that the Spirit came upon him strongly. Today, the Spirit of the Lord is with us. He does not only come to help us accomplish a particular task or go about a specific mission in life, but the Spirit of the Lord is with us. John 14, Jesus says, the helper will come and dwell with you forever. He does not only come when we are in trouble. He is together with us wherever we go. Whatever we do, he is with us. Why? Because he is our helper. Now, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, When the Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Now, Samson received power to handle the lion, but when it came to uh, handling ladies, he had no power. I, I really don't know what, what was wrong with him, but this is what I came to understand. New Testament believers have, have uh, actually more advantages compared to the Old Testament believers because we go with the Spirit of the Lord everywhere the place. It's not about handling difficult situations alone, but even when it comes to uh, deciding correctly, he is together with us. He helps us decide what we ought to do with our lives. Praise be to God. This power is very important. Hallelujah. It makes us turn opposition into opportunities. As a New Testament believer, spirit-filled, you are supposed to look at those challenges as opportunities for getting something sweet out of those, out of those oppositions. Praise be to Jehovah. Now, uh, we've faced COVID-19 for the last four months now. Businesses are not working anymore. People are crying all over, but still have actually noticed that some people are engaging in other ways of bringing bread on the table. They not only depend on where they're employed, but they're able to do that small business elsewhere to make ends meet at the end of the day. Now, when COVID-19 is over, you, you are not going to close that, that, that other channel that you started. You shall have actually done something uh, apart from that which 
you actually are used to. We, we normally live on salaries, but COVID-19 has taught us to engage in other things in order to put bread on the table. Praise be to God. We, if we look carefully, families have healed out of COVID-19. That's why I said, if there is one person who is very dull, is the devil. He miscalculates all the time. He brought COVID-19 to bring us down. Look at the way families have healed today. Fathers are ever in their homes with their wives and children. Children are able to enjoy time with their parents. Why? Because COVID-19 has made it so. Families have healed today. We are able to budget with our money. We don't eat every, every shilling that we get, but we budget with our money today. Hallelujah. Out of the strong, something sweet. Our lives have changed. The way we live, the lifestyle we used to have before COVID-19 is not the kind of lifestyle we have today. Why? Because this strong enemy has made us to actually change our lifestyles, and now we enjoy sweet things. Second Corinthians chapter chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7 to 9. The Bible says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. We are the earthen vessels. We are those vessels of clay today as people. Now, we carry a treasure in us that the power of God, the excellency of the power, that is in us may be made manifest. Why? Because we are troubled on every side. We are troubled on every side. What does this mean? We are pressed on every side. Everything is like working against us. You may be in that state of confusion. You don't know which way to go in life because of the, the way things are, are happening in, in your life. But I want you to know because of the power that you carry by the Spirit of God in you, you are not supposed to be crushed. You are not supposed to be brought to a place of giving up in this life. You are persecuted, but you are not forsaken. Hallelujah. People may rise against you. People may, people may want to silence you in every place. Whatever you want to do, they rise against you. Trying to frustrate your efforts. I want you to hear this from me this afternoon. That even when people rise against you, you are not the kind of person to actually give up in life. Because you know that the Lord has not forsaken you. Yes, people may abandon you. They may run away from you. Friends, family members, uh, people that you used, uh, even your neighbors in your office, people may persecute you in every place. But even in the face of persecution, be ye convinced that the Lord is faithful to his word. He says, I will not leave you, neither shall I forsake you. That's why David is saying, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil because the Lord is together with me. God is with you in every situation that you're facing today. You see, as we grow old, we, we lack strength naturally. But when we, we actually depend on the power that God has for us, even when I grow old, I'll still be as strong as Caleb. Caleb says, whatever I did when I was 40 years old, I'm able to do at 80 today. Because he knows the strength that he carries is not his. It is God's power in him. Praise be to Jehovah. Now, this power enhances two things as I finish today. The power that we carry as earthen vessels will enhance 
Number one, boldness. We are supposed to live bold lives as believers. We are not supposed to be uh, people that are intimidated by situations. Yes, things will rise against us. The economy will work against us. Uh, rulers of this world will, will rise against us. But as believers, we are not supposed to live like cowards. We have a relationship with God that has resulted to power within us as earthen vessels. We carry a superior power compared to whatever power people carry of this world. When you read from John chapter 20, after Jesus had died, these disciples that he had locked themselves in a room for fear of rulers, Jewish rulers, and other people who wanted to kill them as well. They, they would lock themselves in a room. And one morning, Jesus had to, to come and visit them in that room where they were hiding. John chapter 20 and verse 19, the Bible says that they were locked up in a room for fear of the Jews. They had no boldness to stand before the Jews and speak the things that Jesus had instructed them. You know, those three years that Jesus was with them, he gave them instructions. He told them, preach in my name. Heal the sick in my name. Cast out demons in my name. Hallelujah. Raise the dead in my name. But after Jesus died, these guys decided to hide in a room because they feared for their lives. There are many things that are life-threatening to us today. We will not want to face them head on because we think that the next minute will, uh, will be as good as dead. But it is a lie of the devil. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, we did not receive a spirit of fear and timidity, but we received a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. That is the kind of spirit we carry, children of God. We are not supposed to be fearful. We are not supposed to live cowardice lives. We are supposed to be bold people. People that can stand in the face of COVID-19 and speak to it. That you cannot kill me. Come sunshine, come rain. Hallelujah. Because I know the power that I carry within me. It is a power that repels all the fiery darts of the enemy. Whatever the devil would want to do with your lives, it cannot work against you. If you know the power that you carry as an earthen vessel. I'm not a mere person. Hallelujah. You are not a mere person because you believe in God. God deposited his spirit within you that you may be able to to actually show forth the power that is within you in the midst of attacks by the enemy. It doesn't matter what the enemy wants to do with us. The power of God in your life will help you live a life that uh, actually exhibits boldness. You stand boldly before every everything that would want to oppose you and speak with a lot of authority. You know, as believers, we have authority. We have authority over demons. We have authority over sicknesses. We have authority over death. Hallelujah. Even when someone dies, you can bring them back. You carry that kind of power. That even death obeys when you command. Hallelujah. You need to be a believer that issues instructions. Heal the sick. Cast away cancer. And all those other diseases. You have that authority as a believer. But you need to know who you are first of all. You need to understand the power that you carry within you. Praise be to God. Don't allow people or evil forces to intimidate you in this life. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you in this life. Because you received 
a spirit of boldness, a spirit of power. That spirit that is in you is supposed to exhibit power within you. You are supposed to show forth power. You are supposed to work wonders. You are supposed to do that which no man has seen, no ear has heard. That is the kind of a church that we are looking for today. A church that will heal the sick. Hallelujah. They can't confuse us for a hospital where you really need to tread carefully. Otherwise, you get infected with diseases. Not in the church, in Jesus' name. In church, you are supposed to come out a healed person. You can't go where God is and come out the same way you went. God knows how to heal people. We can just sing a simple song and people are healed. The other day, some people were ridiculing a, a preacher who said, I'll only play my guitar and sing that wonderful song that I, I, I love so much and people are healed. Who said that it cannot happen? It happens. You don't have to lay hands all the time. Just sing a song and people are healed. Because that power is not dependent on laying on of hands. Even a simple song, even while preaching a simple message, people are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God heals even today. Thank God we are allowed to go back to church. Brethren, go back to church. Rejoice before the Lord. Praise him. Exalt his name. Hallelujah. And people will receive that which they desire of the Lord. May the Lord bless you this, this afternoon as you go back to church next Sunday. And for, us, for those of us that are, are actually members of this church, next Sunday on the 9th, is it 19th or 8th? when is it? 19th, today is 12th, 19th, we are here praising the Lord.